Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and we are taking out the F7 app. This is a major change from the P38J that you've come off of. If you've picked up this airframe, and it looks like it should be really fast, but it's actually going to be slower, lower altitude flying, and the air to ground armament, while it is a little bit more robust uh, in the form of the thousand pounder with a huge blast radius, it isn't that much of an improvement. And then on top of that, add in that you do get some pretty good guns, but your maneuverability drops significantly. So you find yourself in an interesting spot because you've essentially gone from the pinnacle of tier six heavies, the P-38J, and go ahead and argue with me. I love that plane. It's just awesome. Uh, but... Just being extremely overkill with that sight, guys. Sorry. You end up in an aircraft that flies a lot more like a British Heavy. It's kind of got that multi role esque feel. Ah, cool. But we got really good rudder authority. I'll give it that much. I mean, we do essentially have a... Uh, a water tower on the top of this thing. And then the guns aren't bad. They can definitely do stuff like that. Uh, we need to go over to that mine... Put all effort into it. Let's blitz over there. We do have a specialized bomber on our team, but they also have a player bomber, B-17G, not to be ignored. So I'm going to make my way over there. We do have a pretty substantial reload on the air to ground ordinance, and there is a very strong argument to rip that stuff off of this airframe. But I wanted to throw everything on here and just see how she performed. Looks like our bomber flight's inbound on the enemy position. We'll go after that guy momentarily. Calling for an attack on a bomber aircraft, even though there's nobody nearby, will convince one of my heavies to start making their way over here, which is what I'm really trying to do. Should be able to get these guns on, and we do have enough hit points to play with, I think, to be able to do some pretty good damage here. We managed to capture the zone, so good job to our specialized bomber. Oh, taking some big hits here. Got him, okay. We lost our wing, but we managed to keep the engines up and running, and we're still over 350 hit points, so not too bad. Could have been worse. Let's intercept some bomber flights. Ooh, we may be intercepting a bomber, actually. What is he even doing? Oh, he's not coming this way. This may be a suicidal maneuver right here. I have much more consistent guns, and I think that's a very telling example we just saw there. Oh. We're done for. I just don't want to die in the zone. Oh, we died in the zone. <laughs> All right. We could probably spend the rest of this battle flying over the mining plant and actually doing fairly well for ourselves here. But since we're going to be right in front of the bomber flight, we're probably going to come in here and give them a hand right quick. And then we're going to work our way over to the mine. Throw the defense up there. Rudder, rudder, rudder. Got him. Rudder up. Got him. Ooh. Got 
Nice. Nice nab. That is a human controlled ground attacker. No enemy have it's definitely a major threat. Get out of the zone. Oh, did we get him? Yes, we did. We bombardeered him. Oh, yes. That is great. Way to go. Victory is close. The command centers are ours. Awaiting help from the front headquarters. Whew, it has been a while since I've gotten one of those. <laughs> oh man. So for those of you who are unaware, that is a medal for dropping a bomb and having an enemy fly through it and it end up killing the incoming aircraft, which is what we just did there. So we managed to get the 109 set in a bomb trap. Oh, that felt good. Ah, see, I knew you were here. You can't be squirrely with me, Avery. Firing primarily with the 20s, getting him on target. He is in the zone. Want to get this kill. There we go. That prevented a capture, I think. Nah, they were pretty far away. There is a human bomber pilot flying way too high up here, but that's pretty typical. We've already discussed that, but man, what a, what a good game. Whew. Bombardier, man. I'm glad I was recording for that one. So there is a redeeming quality to having a thousand pounder bomb. Like I said, it's got a huge blast radius, so... We managed to get that last little bit of damage on the 109Z. Not that that secured a victory or anything, but it definitely was entertaining. Uh, it does have good firepower and it can sit on those bombers and really chunk out a lot of damage very quickly. Uh, I went a little overkill with the rockets on that first site when we dropped the bomb and did the rockets, but um, I just wanted to make sure we got that raider site as soon as humanly possible. I like the thousand pounder. I could easily see stripping off the rockets and the bombs if you wanted to. And you could actually get a little bit more performance out of this thing. But as it stands right now, my specialized P-38J with external munitions is going to far surpass the airspeed, altitude, and maneuverability of this airframe. So when I rebought this aircraft, I was actually kind of disappointed with its overall performance. So as a result, I, uh, I, I kind of let it just sit in my hangar for a while. Uh, I do like the look of it. I like the feel of, of what this thing can bring to the fight. But at tier seven, I feel like every time I see this aircraft, I'm at a huge disadvantage, which isn't really fair for me to think like that because to be honest, I, I'm not supposed to be getting into a dogfight with a bf 109 said i didn't be able to hit me with that shotgun of 30s and really ruin my day like we saw earlier um but at the same time it's not a bad aircraft i just needed to wrap my head around the idea that this thing isn't going to be the next iteration of american heavy carrying on the same type of flying characteristics as the p-38s in fact it's completely different and it flies a lot more like what it felt like to fly the Hornet or the Bowfighter or the Mosquito. It's just going to have that set of 20s along with some machine gun fire that's going to allow it to be able to potentially get some fires while also giving some pretty good damage attrition very rapidly against the enemy. And as you can see here, we're actually sporting 640 damage per second, which is pretty good because it's actually much more consistent now if we compare that to the 109z sure it has a damage a cumulative damage of 734 damage per second 
but we know that that's notional, right? That's if the 30s are all hitting at the same time on the same target. But these are all spread out across the entire airframe. And like I said, I really fly this thing and operate it like it's a, like an auto shotgun. While this thing has the 20s located right in the wing roots and the 50 cals right in the nose. So it gets a very good cluster of fire, which again makes it feel a lot like what I remembered when I was flying the Mosquito and the Hornet. So your mileage may vary depending on how you go into this airframe. And I find going off into the periphery, I never went, I didn't go at the airfield. The only reason we got close to it was to try and get the 109Z off of our bombers. But uh, you'll note that was also the time that we got killed and the next time we got killed is when we got close to the airfield again and got into the tussle trying to take out that il was it an il8 yeah and we ended up getting killed by the 109z uh although it is always funny to drop a bomb on a heavy fighter anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video and the quick look here at the f7f and as always i'll catch you on the next one